Are you listening? Damn. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Nerf Report, your go-to source for all of the week's gaming news, nerfed down into one show once a week, so you can hurry up and get back to playing that Anthem beta. Well, at least when the beta comes back up. Speaking of which, is the beta back up? Yeah. It is? Oh, <laughs> let's hurry up and talk about the news so I can get back to playing the game. On this week's episode, Nintendo has announced that that game you thought was coming, but weren't sure when it was coming, is coming, but you're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer. But before we dive straight into that story, here are your top headlines. Currently, the Nintendo Switch is home to some of the best indie games in the world. And this week, Nintendo UK held a small Nintendo showcase to update gamers on what Switch games they can look forward to. So, let's talk about it in a recurring segment that I like to call, All the Games Who Are Independent, Throw Your Hands Up At Me. During the showcase, Nintendo showed off games like Wargroove, Double Kick Heroes, When Ski Lifts Go Wrong, Forager, Goat Simulator, I love that game. In most, Unruly Heroes, Crosscode, and SteamWorld Quest, Hand of Gilgamesh. And with that many indie games coming out, what a perfect segue to talk about our latest show, This Week in Gaming. Every Monday, we run down all of the games coming out that week. If you haven't checked it out yet, after this video is done, we'll add it to the end cards, and in the description down below, we'll go ahead and put a link. Check it out, let us know what you think. Don't forget, this week in gaming every Monday. Overwatch is celebrating the new year with brand new skins for their annual Lunar New Year event. The brand new skins are designed to celebrate the Chinese Year of the Pig and are themed after famous people in Chinese history. The update includes new seasonal items and a capture the flag mode. The Overwatch Lunar New Year event started on January 24th and lasts until February 18th. Well, if you've watched the show for a while, you know that I am an avid fan of the world of his sports. And this week we received an announcement that will forever change the world of his sports. First, we were given Call of Duty. Then we were given League of Legend, and just when you thought the Overwatch League was the peak of competition, the world of esports has a new competitor. Farming Simulator 19. This week, developer Giant Software announced the Farming Simulator League. The league will consist of 10 tournaments held across Europe that will lead to the finals at FarmCon 2020. Giant Software also announced that they will be putting up a 250,000 euro grand prize in order to entice the greatest farming simulator players in the world. I volunteer as tribute. 250,000 euros is a lot of money. And if all I gotta do is bail virtual stacks of hay, I'm gonna rock at this. And finally for this week, we come to the sexiest part of this week's show. Let's talk about some 2018 financial reports. The consumer research group NPD just released its 2018 recap of the video game industry. And overall, the industry is doing extremely well. According to NPD, the US games industry generated over $43 billion in revenue for 2018. That number is up 17% from 2017, when the industry generated $36 billion. Of that $43 billion, a whopping $35.8 billion is due to software sales, in-game purchases, and subscriptions. So all of you complaining about loot boxes, I hope you're happy. Hardware and peripherals made up about $7.5 billion of that number. And just to give you a comparison, the Nerf Report's total revenue for 2018 made up about .0000002% of that total revenue. But hey, we got a new t-shirt on the way. Now for something completely different Yeah. Metroid Prime 4, easily one of the most anticipated games for the Nintendo Switch. It was originally announced at the 2017 E3 press conference, and since that day, Nintendo Bros and Switch heads have speculated as to when that game might become available for the Nintendo Switch. And this week, all of that speculation came to a head when Nintendo announced that that game was being completely scrapped and redesigned from the ground up. No, no, hell no, please, no, no, 
No! 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 I refuse! No! No! I just felt a great disturbance in the force, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. Now, this announcement raises so many questions. Like, why, oh, why would Nintendo do this? Or are Metroid fans really willing to wait that much longer without losing patience? Well, this is sounding like a brand new segment that I like to call, Do you have the time to listen to me whine about everything but mostly just Metroid Prime? The original Metroid launched in 1986 and combined the elements of a 2D side-scrolling platformer with the mechanics of a shooter. The game centers around Samus, who is a space bounty hunter, and her adventures focus on protecting and wiping out any threat against the Galactic Federation. Samus primarily uses a series of biological weapons, including the Metroid, to defeat her enemies. Now, since its release in 1986, Metroid has had a total of 14 games released, and throughout those titles, both Samus and the series have evolved. I mean, over the 30 plus years, we've seen Metroid games like Metroid 2, Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion, Metroid Prime, Metroid Zero, Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime Pinball, Metroid Prime Hunters, Metroid Prime 3, Metroid Other M, Metroid Prime Federation Force, Metroid Samus Returns. Man, you gotta love Nintendo. Once they get a title that they love, they never give it up. Sooner or later, we're gonna be playing like Metroid Prime 46. Well, all of those games bring us to June of 2017. Nintendo is hot off the release of their brand new Nintendo Switch, and gamers are hungry for brand new video games to play. So at that year's E3, Nintendo announced that Metroid Prime 4 was in development. Now, at the time, very little was known about this game. It was speculated that Bandai Namco was developing the game, and we knew that it would be eventually launching on the Nintendo Switch. Well, that was up until this week when Nintendo released a three minute video featuring Nintendo General Manager of Entertainment and Development, Shinya Takahashi. During the announcement, Takahashi shared that the current development of Metroid Prime 4 did not hold up to Nintendo's standards of quality. And moving forward, Nintendo would be assigning Kensuke Tsunabe as the new producer of Metroid, with Retro Studios restarting the development of Metroid Prime 4. Nintendo also apologized for the delay, but reassured fans that this is the best step for the game, fans, and the company. Now, I gotta say, the whole white backdrop, blue suit apology, really digging it. Like, next time that I have to make a really difficult announcement apologizing for something, definitely gonna use that strategy. And I mean, also, Nintendo using subtitles, genius idea, because you prevented someone like me from, well, doing something like this. Hello, my name is Brian Chappelle. On this week's episode, we made a joke, and I would like to apologize for it. It was in poor taste, and honestly, not even that funny. So, sorry. You deserve better. Now, to wrap this up, Retro Studios taking over the development of Metroid Prime 4 is good news. The Austin-based studio has already handled both the 2002 Metroid Prime along with Metroid Prime 2 and 3. So, in a way, the game is coming home. But for some gamers, I completely understand why you're upset. Metroid Prime 4 being delayed is bad news for you. You were looking forward to the game. but. I guess all I can do is remind you the words of famed Nintendo developer Shigeru Miyamoto. A delayed game is eventually a good game. A bad game is bad forever. And finally for this week, we come to that noise, of course, signifies that we are running out of time and coming close to the end of the show. So in order to cover the rest of the week's remaining news, we must initiate a segment that I like to call Nerfed in 60 Seconds.
every single week we have so much news to talk about and so little time to do it. So we take all the week's remaining news, put 60 seconds on the clock, and try to cover it as fast as humanly possible without running out of breath, passing out, or dying. So far, 2019, we are 3-0. Zero deaths, baby. So with that in mind, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. And go. Fortnite has announced that it will be eliminating all blind loot boxes from Fortnite Save the World. Good on you, Epic. Uh, Soldier Boy was in the news this week. <laughs> Gotta love him. Uh, Soldier Boy announced that Fortnite will be coming to his Soldier Boy console, to which the developer Epic Games said, Yeah, that's a big nope from us, bud. Uh, Stellaris will be launching on consoles this February, and speaking of February, the Pokemon Go community event for February was just announced, in which Swinub will be the featured Pokemon. That's a really weird choice. The Nintendo Wii Shop will be closing down shortly. We got a brand new trailer for Far Cry New Dawn. Check that out. That game looks fantastic. Uh, Command & Conquer 3, along with all the add-ons and expansions, are now backwards compatible for the Xbox One. Slay the Spire is coming out of early access. Anthem has gone gold. Mortal Kombat 11 might get crossplay if the developer gets its way. And the Player Unknown Battleground Snow Map is now on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Woo! We did it. That is it for Nerfed in 60 Seconds, and that is it for this week's episode of the show. If you like what you saw, make sure to hit that like button. If you're new here and haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. As always, my name is Bryant Chappelle. You are you, and this has been the Nerf Report. Thanks for watching.